Hey, my man, how's it going, brother? Going really good. Nice to see you, Lee. Likewise. You're looking great. Thank you. Hey, hey dude. How are you? I'm doing good. Yes, sir. How was your night? Yeah, way different. <laughs> it was a lot different. Uh, yeah, it was just um, smooth and high. Thanks for coming, brother. Good to see you. So, how are you, brother? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. How are you, my man? Doing okay. He's dry. Yeah. That one's not the So the, cer the ceremony turned out a lot a lot smoother than the other night, huh? For almost yeah. everybody. Yeah. And I almost non existent. Yeah. It was, yeah. Uh, it was very true. Yeah, it was, it, it was like because the, the way you guys were, were, were moving through the other day it was pretty heavy. Mm. And now it, it, it last night it was it was Wow, smooth as shit. But that's fine. That's fine because you still get the same penetration from the medicine. And that's basically what we're looking for. What we're looking for is that. You know, we're looking for the penetration of the medicine so that it comes into you, it changes your reflexes and your spontaneous responses so that everything works out in a, in a way that's resonant with, with you, with your soul, with your heart. That's about it. The, the bottom line on it. But the thing is, it's a lot more complicated than you think because sometimes it goes way off the grid of anything that you thought was awareness. Because it's awareness of so many things at the same time. And have you experienced any of that? Have you experienced any things that you did not expect while you were here? Um, yeah, the first night for sure. Mm -hmm. And after that it was, it, it was a little bit more user friendly? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, that usually happens. You go through a few transitions, and and the ayahuasca has a tendency to be a stra strategy trickster. So it will bring you to a certain level, and then it will give you a curve, and then it will bring you to another level. And it's kind of testing your metal. You know, testing, well, how much capacity do you have to apply this to your life? How much capacity do you have to bring it down to earth and to actually make it part of your life? That's very important. Because if you ignore it, then you close the door. And if you close the door, it's going to be hard to open it again. Because the spirit world, when it comes to you, you have to respect it for what it is. And it's extremely, extremely vibrant and has a lot of potency. It comes right into the very center of the world. So what we were going to talk about today is uh, expanded consciousness, and that's exactly it. Expanded consciousness is it, it, what the Hindus and the yogis and and, and uh, the New England mystics and and, uh, and the Indians in South Dakota and the Indians in, in Navajo land they all working for expanded consciousness, and they're looking for expanded consciousness in the way that they are more connected to their environment. So that they're connected with the plants, with the animals, with the wind, with the rain, and with their families, but most of all with their spiritual selves, with their ability to move up and to become more effective. And that's what we all need, and that's what we all want, is to be a bigger blessing to the people around us. And the only way you can do that is to be completely aware of your past, of your present and your future, of your body, of your mind, and of your spirit, and of everything that we have as a guide and a ballast. Because a guide and a ballast is inside. We have the God within. That's We have a God without, of course, because the God without and the God within work together. They create each other to a certain extent. We've been created. And we create again. We continue that conduit. But when you have a touch with the God within, the beautiful part of it is that you no longer have to be frightened. And fear is a horrible, horrible thing to have. If you have to watch out every time you you cross a corner or every time you walk in front of a church, you have to protect you. Don't call that belief in God. 
The belief in God means that we have a protection over us all the time. Because we know we're sons of God or we're daughters of God or whatever we are. We are already protected. That's from inside. We don't have to pull anything in from outside. Okay, we have all the native equipment to be 100% protected by the God within us. And the ayahuasca will open that conduit for you, not in an intellectual way, in a very visceral way, so that you feel it. And even if you lose your perspective or you lose your ability to think straight, you will still have it. It will come right from here. And anything negative that comes towards you is going to bounce off. Because you're going to have that pyramid of light around you. And it comes from the God within you. Now the ayahuasca, more than any other sacred sacrament that I've found on the planet, is capable of opening that up, activating it, and making it constant and complete. So that we have complete right, with no repentance, with no work, to just say, yeah, that's who I am. I hope you like it, because if you don't, you're not going to do much about it, because I don't want to gender the whole thing. Okay? It's not me, it's the God within me. And it's the God without us, that protects us from the world. You know, those are two things that we call enlightened consciousness. Enlightened consciousness. When I was, when I was uh, in my early 20s, we all went to India and Nepal and then we went to study with the yogis and to study with the people. So the only way we're going to get enlightened is to get the fuck out of here and go somewhere else. It was not true. We studied there for years, but we came back and we got enlightened in our own country. Because it was coming from inside us. And all of you are always going to get enlightened in your hometown, wherever you come from. Because it's right here. That's where it is. And you can sit in, in meditation for 12 hours every day. You can do Tai Chi the rest of the time. Well, that's fine. But the thing is, if God does not put his finger on you from outside and inside, you're not going to have that power. You're not going to have that clarity that you guys can get with medicine. And with the ayahuasca medicine, because it goes directly into your DNA and your control box, it cants it to the right about 30 degrees. And then everything that happens to you is going to be synchronistically magic. You're going to start meeting new people. You're going to start having new thoughts. You're going to start being aware of certain things that don't work for you and other things that work for you very well. And that's what we call expanded consciousness. In other words, consciousness of ourselves. That's about it. Because we're microcosms of the world and the galaxies and the universe outside. We are microcosms. And that is why all of the mystics, all the seers, they go inside to find out their solutions. We don't go outside, we go inside. We go into the dream state, we go into the trance state. The American Indians used to go inside. They had their chiefs. Their chiefs were seers, their old people. They have a problem? We're going to have a problem very soon, probably tomorrow. Okay, let's talk in the morning. Go into the dream state. Come back out and say, time to leave. Pack up. We'll be out of here by 11. So when the soldiers come into the camp, we're already moved 30 kilometers sideways because the women and children depend on our intelligence and our agility to get them out of here. But how did they find that? Well, the Braves come in. They got all the information on the, on the earth, but they don't know exactly what's going to happen. But the chief goes to sleep and he dreams the whole thing. And he said, there's another valley over to the side and we're moving there. So pack up and let's go. And there's not anybody in the whole tribe that's not going to follow him. And say, oh, you young bucks, you warriors, you guys ride herd, okay, on the corners, make sure nobody follows us. Because we got to protect the innocents. And where does he find that information in the dream state? We find our information there too. So the dream state, that's why we take 
so many alterants to try to get us into an altered state because we realize we haven't got a grip on it here. But the thing about the ayahuasca medicine is that it is the most sacred sacrament. It's short-lived. It only lasts for four or five hours in a very intense way. It brings us up, teaches us what we have to know, brings us back down, and leaves us stronger, more clear in our minds and our bodies, and has no negative side effects. It doesn't lead to residuals of uric acid. It doesn't deplete our adrenal glands. Like masculine, peyote, some people, suicidal. Not to say those power plants aren't incredibly sacred and beautiful, and I've used them extensively. But the ayahuasca has no negative side effects at all. And so if you're looking for higher consciousness, if you're looking for consciousness that is going to really last and go forward and leave you your physical body in your cerebral cortex completely clear and powerful, ayahuasca is your fastest horse. Because you can take it a lot. And it will only get you better and better and better. So that is why we work and we heal and we do psychic exploration with ayahuasca here. And you guys are very powerful and intelligent to come here and give it a try. I'm, I'm glad you don't mind the rain. <laughs> because the weather is a constant factor. That's why we live in houses like this. But you get used to it and uh, it's really really a big blessing because after growing up in Colorado, New Mexico, Sierra Nevada and northern Michigan, this is a walk in the park. It's really comfortable and you can walk around just like you, you know, with no clothes on all day. <laughs> it's a cinch. And so everything here is very very conducive to a sensual easy lifestyle. And, and that's why uh, I've adapted very quickly to this, you know, and I love it. And I appreciate you guys coming. I know it's strange, but uh, you'll get used to it. Because they just closed all the airports, and there's no way out. <laughs> there's a nuclear attack. No, just kidding. <laughs> no, everything's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> you'll be able to leave on schedule. So thanks for your presence. Thanks for coming by, okay? It's really good to see you. And things are working out fine. Nate, are, are you are you extrapolating the thoughts we talked about yesterday? Yeah, I uh, wanted to give you an update. Um, sure, as soon as you have the time, you know, we'll just, we'll just get together on our own. Because, uh, yeah, we had a really good discussion yesterday. The three of us, one by one. But yeah, it, it was really, uh, I could see the power of the medicine. Yeah, I can see the power of the medicine, and I see uh, how it had everybody's best interest at heart. But it was bringing them places that they probably never been before. And that's exactly where they wanted to go, and is places they've never been before. And like it's what you, you know? <laughs> it's, it's not easy, but it's fun, you know? It's a lot of fun because you say, well, I thought it was going to be all light. It's just, well, it's not all light because there's day and there's night, you know, and there's clouds and there's sun. There's a lot of different parts of your life, and you're going to have to ride it all out. you got to stay balanced and equilibrated and serene in the face of anything that's going to come your way. Because, sadly enough, in spite of the fact that we have all the control mechanisms around us, we really don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So the only thing we can do to prepare is not to put more missile systems out there, not to put more radar systems, but to prepare right here. So that whatever comes down, we can handle it. Because we'll make the right decision at the right time. And ayahuasca is an enormous ally to help you do that. And that's basically what we call expand your awareness. And it's a lot better than sitting in a yoga position for 12 hours. Because that's tough on the knees. <laughs> you got to get out and exercise. 
But the ayahuasca is extremely efficient to, to help you do that. And I'm glad that it's working for everybody. The gamut of people who are here is enormous. Okay. You know, we get people from all walks of life. And they really, I mean, none of them, and that's probably including you guys, you don't know what to make of it because, because uh, you know, I'm, I'm a, a middle-class college boy from Michigan, but I lived in third world countries and studied all kinds of anthropology and psychology and stuff. I also did shamanic studies in the last 20 years. And I run this place, but I get an enormous third world knowledge and, and, it, and I know that everybody comes in and kind of says, how does this work? It looks easy. Yeah. But it's a strange for them. It is strange for them. Because you have a, a very loyal workforce, very dedicated, beautiful people, like the carpenters, people who build the houses, people who cook the food, clean the houses, and so on. Beautiful people. Very hand-picked, in other words, very well-strained. Okay. Somebody comes in, they don't work out, you get rid of them. And so that's why we have such a good staff. And then the people from outside we don't strain at all. We just say, if you want to come in, they just say, I would like to have you help me with this. Can you help me? Yes. Now, I know I can help them. I don't know how far I can help them yet. I don't know how far it's going to go, but I do know that I have to see somebody to work with. It. Because if you don't, you can't just take a case study and then tell them, well, why don't you take this and this and this? Because the psychosomatic angle that you guys are focused on is the base. Because you open your mind and your heart and you give yourself permission to transform or to evolve or to survive, whatever you're looking for. And then you'll get it. Your physical frame will generally follow. That's what I've found. You know? and because with all the, thing, all, all the things that I've done throughout my life, it's basically been my mind and my spirit that have healed me of everything that happened to me. And and uh, and always brought me forward, healed me not only of, of physical, but also psychic and personal injuries, like when somebody betrays you or somebody disrespects you and you know damages your self confidence. So I trust this person, so I'm all of a sudden realize trying to take advantage of. Them. But that all, always came from a medicine. And you and, and anybody who lives in this world is going to have to deal with it all the time. And that's why I say, when you take ayahuasca, you become ready for whatever's coming down the tube. And you, you no doubt get stuff that's going to surprise the hell out of you. Whether it be men or women, or government officials, or parents, sisters or brothers, People are going to always disappoint the hell out of you. And then, on the other hand, some people are going to really, really make you light up. And say, well, you know, it restores my faith in human friends. But they're far and few between. Nobody's ever gotten anything done without breaking a few rules along the way. Now, how did how, how did new countries get formed? How did revolutions happen? Well, people make new rules, and then those become the new rules. Okay. And so uh, we, we've got to do that not only socially but personally. Because you have certain parameters, and uh, there's people who break them. And when people break them, they become the new kings. Guess what happens? <laughs> That's just like what Bob Dylan said. He says, 
steal a little bit and they put you in jail. Steal a lot and they make you king. Now, it's not just a question of stealing. It's also a question of changing the rules. Okay. You change the rules a little bit, the smacking in jail. You change the rules a big bit. <laughs> they put you in charge. Yeah. So keep that in mind. The only thing we have working with us is finesse and creativity and subtlety. You've got to know how you do your stuff. You know? You got to be strategic. You got to be kind. Some days it's not a good day to play. Some days it's a good day to just sit back. Say, so you got to choose your turf. You know, if you have an if you have a project, you have an honorable goal. Believe me, you'll get the help, and I'll probably come to right to you on the ground. If they send somebody down here and it changes the entire paradigm inside their mind and then everything that work that the, the, the doctor did to them works because they have the psychosomatic opening to be over here. And so, uh, so much of that is precisely what we do and, uh, and so much of that will serve you really well in the future. You keep it in mind because you're gonna need it really bad. But after you're here, I think it'll be very easy. It'll be easy for you. <laughs> so, are uh, you guys all coming to the ceremony tonight? Mm -hmm. We were all thinking about maybe going back to a whole cup. But okay. Well, whatever you guys decide on, you know. Uh, I, I, you know, it, we'll do it one by one, we don't have to do it all together, but, but, uh, um, a full cup is a beautiful dosage. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see, yeah, let's see, <laughs> so tonight we'll get, we'll do a full cup.